Hey everyone, it's Chad. I'm studying for the MuleSoft Certified Developer Level 1 exam, and I couldn't help but notice that there's an overwhelming amount of questions that relate to error handling. And I realized that if I want to pass, I need to have a really good grasp of the concept first. So, to set expectations, in this video, we're going to talk about error handling in MuleSoft. I will admit that I had some personal struggles understanding how to solve these problems. And if you're watching this video, maybe you are too. I hope that you can find this and it helps you pass. Let's get started. We really only need to concern ourselves with two HTTP status codes today. The first is 200 OK, and the second is 500 server error. Next, we will introduce the on error propagate flow error handling component. The behavior of this component is that when an error happens, the execution of the remainder of the flow is bypassed and the status code of 500 is returned to the client, along with an error description that was output by the component that raised the error. In the following diagrams, for on error propagate, we will use red arrows in and red arrows out. The resulting output is that the client receives 500 server error and a description of the error. Next we will discuss the on error continue component of the error handling in a flow. It behaves in the following manner. The remainder of the flow will not be processed. A status code of 200 will be returned to the client along with the payload. In the diagrams in our following case studies, for our on error continue, we will use red arrow going in, but a green arrow going out. How errors will be generated. We will do something that causes a validator to throw an error. It's a validator. It checks that some content matches a specific criteria. The isNumber validator that we will use will check to see if the content of a value is a numerical one. If it is anything other than an integer value, an error condition will be raised. We will set the value that is checking to be a string that is equal to success started flow. This fails the check. When an error condition is raised, an error object is created that contains the error description and error type. In the following cases, assume that error description is being set to success started flow is not a valid integer value. Case study one. On error propagate. Study the following diagram. What output will the client receive? In step one, the payload is being set to the string success started flow. Step two, we move on to the is number validator. Step three, since the payload is not an integer, an error object is created by the is number validator and we move to the flow's error handler. Step four, this flow has a default error handling routine defined by a single on error propagate handling component. Further processing of this flow will not continue, and the status code of 500, along with the error description, success started flow is not a valid integer value, will be sent to the requesting client. Case study two, on error continue. Study the following diagram. What output will the client receive? We begin at the set payload transformer, setting a string that is equal to success started flow. Step two, we move to the isNumber validator, which checks to see if the payload was an integer. Step three, it's not, so we have an error condition, an error description, and we move to the flow's error handling routine, which is defined by a single on error continue handling component. Step four, further processing of the flow will not continue, and a status code of 200 along with the payload set in the error handling routine will be sent to the client. In this case, it says error main flow. To summarize, on error propagate, read in, read out, status code 500, error message is returned. And for on error continue, read in, green out, status code 200, and the payload is returned. We still have quite a bit more to cover. Now might be a good time to rewind the video if there's something you didn't understand. If you're still with me, let's move on. In case study number three, we'll take a look at what happens if you don't have an error handling routine defined and an error is raised. What output do you think that the client will receive? We begin at the set payload transformer, setting a string that is equal to success started flow. In step two, we move to the isNumber validator, which checks to see if that payload was an integer. 
In step three, it's not, so we have an error condition and an error description. We try to find an error handler. However, no error handling routine is defined. Also note that there's no global handler defined. In this situation, the mule default error handling routine caught the error. The default behavior is that of an on error propagate. In step four, a status code of 500 is returned along with the error description Success, started flow is not a valid integer value. Case study number four takes a look at how on error propagate is handled when the error is caught by a user defined global error handling routine. Let's see where the arrows take us. In step one, we set our payload. In step two, the validator fails and an error condition is raised. Step three, a global error handler containing an on error propagate component catches the error. Step four, read in, read out, status code 500 and the error description are returned to the client for on error propagate. Case study number five, global error handler with continue. I wonder what the output will be. Step one, payload is set. Step two, we fail validation. Step three, the global error handling routine defined with on error continue catches the error. Step four, red in, green out for continues. So status code 200 with the payload error global handler is output to the requesting client. Case study number six, behavior of a child flow with an on error continue handler. Study the diagram. Let us begin. Step one, set the payload. Step two, jump to the child flow. Step three, the validator fails its check. Step four, child flow error handler matches the on error condition. Step five, since this is a continue scope, we return to the parent flow with status code 200 and a payload. Step six, no error condition happened in this flow, so processing continues on and success finish flow is set as the payload. Status code 200 is returned with the payload. Case study number seven, child flow error handler with on error propagate. What information will be returned to the client? Step one, we set our payload. Step two, flow reference sends us to the child flow. Step three, the is number validator fails. Step four, further processing in this scope or its parent will not continue. This is an on error propagate. Remember, read in, read out. Step five, status code 500 is returned with a description of the error. Case study number eight, child flow has propagate, but parent flow has continue. What do you think will happen? Let's work it out. Step one, set the payload. Step two, jump to the child flow. Step three, the is number validator fails. Step four, on error propagate. So we return to the parent flow. Step five, the parent flow has an on error continue. Red in, green out. So we return the payload, error, main flow error handler, and the status code 200. Case study number nine. Behavior of error handler inside a try block with on error continue. Are you going to try this one on your own? Step one, we set our payload. Step two, we enter the try block and the is number validator fails. Step three, the error handler in the try statement catches this validation failure. It's set to on error continue, red in, green out. Step four, we exit the try block without the error condition and continue processing the rest of the flow. Step five, status code 200 is set with success finish flow as the payload and this information is returned to the client. Let's take a look at case study number 10. This one has a try block with on air propagate. What information will be returned to the client? In step one, the payload is set. In step two, we enter the try block and the is number validator fails. In step three, the error handler in the try statement catches this validation failure 
but this time the air handler is an on-air propagate. Red in, red out. We exit the try block with an air object containing the air description. No default handler is defined for the flow, so Mule's default handler catches the exception. Status code 500 is sent to the client along with success started flow is not a valid integer value. Case study 11. Inflow matching event type. What status code and payload are returned to the client? Let's find out. At step 1, the payload is set. At step 2, the is number validator fails and sets the error description. At step 3, this flow has its own handling routines defined by three different type error conditions. They are all on error continue, but one of them matches the specific event defined in error type for validation invalid number, and we set the payload to error invalid number. At step 4, the status code 200 is returned along with the payload error invalid number. In case study number 12, no matches in the flow or global handler. What information would be returned? Step 1, we set the payload. Step 2, the validator fails. Step 3, in this flow's diagram there are multiple error handlers, and even a global error handler, but none of the types are matched, so the mule default error handler kicks in, and the exception is responded to using an on-error propagate strategy, so status code 500 is returned with the error message, success, started flow is not a valid integer value. Case study 13, custom error message with on-error propagate. If we inspect the XML of the isNull validator, we can see that the message parameter is populated with the value validation error. This custom error message will be stored in the error message value of the error object that is created when the validator fails. At step 1, the payload is set. At step 2, the validator fails. At step 3, since there is no error handler defined in this flow, the mule default error handler catches the exception, on error propagate. At step 4, status code 500 is returned with the custom error message. In case study 14, we have a custom error mapper defined in the listener. You may set a certain type of error to map to another type in the error mapping section of the listener in your flow. Note in the XML that the error type will be changed from source type to the target type. In this instance, if HTTP not found is encountered, the app API resource not found error type condition will be raised as the error when the object is created. In step 1, the request is sent out to the web. In step 2, the server responds with a not found error. Error type is set and an error is raised. In step 3, a match that was mapped is found and the payload is set. At step 4, since this is an on error continue, red and green out, we have a status code 200 returned with the payload app API resource not found. To summarize, propagate, red in, red out. This is associated with the 500 server error and the error message. Continue, red in, green out. This is associated with 200 OK and the payload. If there are multiple error handlers, the first type matching error handler handles the situation. If there are multiple error handlers and no matches are found, it will be handled by the mule default which means propagate on error with status code 500 and an error message. Also, if the diagram shows anything extra, like other XML or specific settings, this is a clue that something has been changed from the default and you should not expect default behavior. Good luck!